This is Robert Demers for Conman here at the New York Comic Con, and I'm here with Peter David, writer of basically every kind of medium you could think of, including my favorite comic book series, X Factor. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fine. I was so sorry to hear about your recent uh, health problems. Have you been faring all right? I'm fine. It took me five weeks to learn how to walk again, but once I was done with that, I'm, I'm really much better. What was it about comics that uh, so interested you to become a writer of comics? I was interested in comic books from when I was a kid, when I was first reading them. So the prospect of actually being able to work with them was really kind of a dream come true. And I think we're all glad for it. Are there any creators uh, that inspired your own work? Well, in terms of comic books, certainly Stan Lee was a major influence. I mean, um, Stan was the first person to really make me aware of the creators. Um, reading DC Comics, which is where I started out reading, I really didn't have any idea of the various creators involved. But St first of all, Stan's name was on all the damn things. And second, his storylines and adventures were so unique that how could you not help but notice the artistry? Uh, also, Roy Thomas was uh, something of an influence in the old days. Though I wasn't able to attend the panel uh, about the, the X-Men uh, panel, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the corporate teaser that was released earlier? The corporate what? Uh, the corporate teaser. Oh, yes, absolutely. The concept is that there is a, an organization in the Marvel Universe called Serval Industries that is a, the creator of the biggest uh, search engine in the Marvel Universe. And much as Google has, Servo has expanded into various franchises that they feel can be of worth to humanity. And one of them is superheroes. Servo has decided to create the first corporately owned superhero team. They licensed the name X Factor from Jamie Madrox, have taken it over, and are busy assembling their team. The first three members are going to be Quicksilver, Polaris, and Gambit. And it's going to be coming out, I believe, in January. Well, I'm happy to hear that the X Factor name is continuing. Me too. Uh, with the previous uh, end of the X Factor, the first volume, uh, and leaving those characters behind, the ones that are not continuing onwards, does it feel like you're just uh, when you leave these characters that you, that you leave something behind of yourself? Oh, absolutely. I mean, when you're living with characters in your head for so long, naturally they're going to follow you pretty much wherever you go. I mean, I've still got the Hulk rattling around in there, and I haven't written to him in 15 years. <laughs> Another one of my favorite uh, series that you have done is the Dark Tower adaptations. Uh, when it began, the series, oh so long ago, and oh so many volumes, uh, how did you uh, convert the Stephen King's books into the comic book format at the time? Well, Robin Firth, who probably knows more about Midworld than anyone, including Stephen King, actually did the conversion into the comic book. What I did was I wrote the dialogue, and I was the one who figured out how to tell the story from a dialogue point of view. And part of it was the creation of an unseen narrator who I always pictured was just kind of sitting there, you know, during a campfire or something like that with a bunch of cowboys who were on the trail and talk started turning to Roland Deschain and the guy said, oh, you want to hear about Roland Deschain? I'll tell you about Roland Deschain. And he proceeded to tell the story. And that was pretty much, that was one of my major contributions to it. Do you find that there's a difference between telling a story of someone else's characters from a book series like Dark Tower than creating your own characters? Well, there's always going to be a difference in that you, when you're writing your own character, you have total control over that character. But most of my comic book work has involved writing other people's characters, so no, it's not really different for me. What new things can we look forward to the upcoming X Factor series? Oh. Well, X Factor finds itself in kind of a strange position because they're essentially working for a corporation. And on the one hand, 
a lot of corporations have a very negative uh, impact, or at least a very negative um, promotion, not promotion, reputation, thank you. They have a very negative reputation. Uh, and several industries insist that no, they're not like that. They really just want to help people. So you've really got X Factor uncertain of it because Gambit doesn't trust them. Polaris trusts them implicitly and we're never quite sure where Quicksilver's mind is. And of course there are the other members of the team who are going to be showing up over the first six issues who will all be approaching it from a different point of view. I think that should be fairly exciting for the fans. And uh, I'm excited. So I'm a fan. I'm no, excited. Right. Okay. Thank you so much for talking with us. No problem. Enjoy Thank your rest of time here. And I wish you all the success with the upcoming series. Thank you.